Melissa, thanks very much for joining us. Hi, good to see you. You too, appreciate your time. Um, Umph is all about inspiring people to achieve extraordinary things, so who and what during your life and career has inspired you? Uh, my grandmother was a huge inspiration for me. She was an extraordinary woman. Yeah. Uh, so she was um, born at you know, the beginning of last century. She, she was one of those people that travelled when other people, you know, what young woman her age didn't. She was someone that went on adventures. She read widely. She had opinions on things. Um, she, yes, she raised her family and did that in a, in a fantastic way, but she was also someone that sort of pushed herself beyond the limits, I think. Okay, and what about in politics? You, you're obviously a cabinet minister since 2008. Have you had any political mentors who have been quite helpful for you? Well, I grew up in Kinloch which um, on the shores of Lake Taupo and Sir Keith Hollyoak actually had a holiday home there and his family owned pretty much half a Kinloch at that stage um, so a huge farm and so uh, I met him a few times as a child I certainly had a wee bit to do with his family and with his grandson who was a uh, similar age to me yeah. so I must say he was a little bit of an influence mm. and I was kind of starry eyed and in awe of this man who used to helicopter in occasionally and say so as a child you can imagine it was pretty exciting. Yeah. So I do, I do think that that connection sparked an interest in politics. Okay, and today is there anybody who you call regularly and ask for advice on certain things? Or? Uh, you can't go past your mum. Yeah. <laughs> but that's more often on, you know, do you think this colour suits me and what should I do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you do, and my world actually in some respects becomes quite small yeah. um, because I'm dealing with such um, sort of confidential information yeah, all of the time. Yeah. And sometimes you get to a point where when you're a leader as well, everyone looks at you for strength. Yeah. Um, so who do you lean on mm. to actually hold you up at, at, at times? Okay. And that does become family, I've got to be honest. It becomes my husband. Yeah. Uh, nothing gets me inspired more or going more than spending time with children yeah. and that's the truth of it so I just do things like that that help motivate me and keep me on track awesome so um, your, yeah, your story is quite extraordinary from um, having been solo mum at 17 to um, then working some, some low paid jobs such as a dishwasher and then upskilling yourself at not, in 1994 sorry at Massey University um, what, what inspired you to pick yourself up back then? Uh, lots of things. I think when I got pregnant at such a young age, I, I felt that there was going to be this perception that that was it. Yeah. You know, like this is your life. You're one of those girls that right. got caught and now you've had a baby, you'll just have more of them. You know, that, that, and that kind of language, you know, yeah. that sort of just and this is it and you're on a benefit. And I did feel like I'd, uh, you know, like my future looked pretty bleak, to mm. be honest. I... You know, I sort of looked at it, I had a young baby, I was uneducated, I hadn't held down a proper job, and my future was looking like heading very mm. much further down that path. But I really did feel the only person that could change it was me. And, uh, and I've had, had a strong sense of self-responsibility. Yeah. So uh, through my own choices, and I'd kind of got myself into this situation, yeah. really through my next choices, I could get myself out. And do young people today who are in similar situations have that same motivation, or do you think there's um, do you think there's been a change and people just don't have the motivation to pick themselves up? I was just at a teen parent unit yeah. um, uh, here in uh, Kaipoi, and those young women were turning up every day right. uh, with their children and putting them into early childcare yeah. uh, next door to them so that they could keep that connection, and they were absolutely committed to their education. Mm. So I do think that there is a desire that if you put the right supports around yep. young people, then they can achieve great things and they want to. Yep. They Absolutely. don't always know how. Okay, so for people who are, I guess, struggling with their own motivation, what would your advice be for them? Uh, it is a bit up to you, yeah. and it's not going to be easy. No. I sometimes think we give this, uh, I get a little bit cross when I get this, you know, it's hard and it is. Well, who told you it's going to be easy? <laughs> You know, yeah. particularly for those that have had babies. Actually, you're a kid that's had a kid. Yeah. Um, you've chosen a, you know, she's a pretty tough path you're on. Yeah. Um, it is going to take hard work and a lack of sleep and a bit of grit and determination. Yeah. And you know what? Life's going to throw you a bit more crap along the way by, you know? <laughs> It's kind of how it goes. Yeah. So you've got to be willing to help yourself. Yeah. yeah. So I do not fall for the victim stuff. As mm. I say, the moment I feel sorry for you, mm. um, I'll give you every bit of love and support, um, but I'm going to push and control and encourage you, and I think that's where we get behind and we back. 
and believe in them so they can believe in themselves. Absolutely. And um, after you got your BA, you did some work for Murray McCulley and his um, election campaign and so on. Um, was that really vital for you in terms of you learning about politics before you entered politics in 2005? He was such a hard <laughs> <laughs> He seriously was one tough guy, you know, Um, and in respect, I'd spent my life around tough guys, so I just thought he was another one, but he wore a suit was the only difference, I was sort of went from the swan dry to the suit, so he didn't intimidate me um, in any way, shape or form, I learned so much, so yes he was tough and all of that, but because I wasn't intimidated, I just soaked it up. Yeah. Uh, and he was critical and he was demanding. Right. Um, I loved it. I excelled okay. under it. So for people who are wanting to, to get into politics, they should upskill themselves, learn off others and do as much as possible before actually... Yeah, totally. Them. And if you want to get into politics, I really think, um, what's your niche? What have you got to offer yeah. that's different than the next person? Now, okay. you know, and I just think sometimes when I meet young people, they're like, I'm going to do this and do this mm-hmm. and go into politics. It's like, well, what are you going to offer mm-hmm. that's different? You know, are you going to be an expert in environment, you're an expert in law, certain mm. types of law, are you an expert in social issues, mm. are you an expert in, you know, how to bring the most vulnerable forward, you know, and I just think too many people haven't given that sort of, so, what's the speciality yeah. that they bring to politics. And for you, do you believe that life experience is just vitally important? Well, I don't think everyone should do it the way I did. <laughs> you know, you don't have to have a baby in your teens <laughs> to actually give you a yeah. bit of life experience do and do something and different. And... Definitely. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do. Look, there's a place for youth in Parliament as well, so don't yeah. get me wrong. But, yeah. but um, I do think that, yeah, I do think there is a little bit of that, a bit of yeah. life under your belt. Um, I guess someone who's been there and, and done stuff in the industry has more to bring than, say, someone who's been a career politician in their whole life. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, um, so you first ran for Parliament in uh, 2005 after resigning from a role um, in the human resources industry. Um, what inspired you to get into politics in the first place? Well, I loved my job, yeah. so actually it was a really big decision at that time. Um, I was about to go and do my MBA, which mm-hmm. was an awesome opportunity. I was in an international leadership um, a fellowship which was really pushing me as a person. I was finally making some money, to be mm. honest. So the step into politics at that time, I really thought I'd wait. I okay. was young enough um, and I could wait. Mm. But the timing was right and the party kind of felt that they needed me. Um, I, you know, I deliver the same message but in a different voice, to mm. be quite honest. So, you know, there was a little bit of that. So I was quite happy to run and lose at that time. Yeah. Um, ironically, I ran and, and got in um, last on the list. So it was probably the timing was right. I had something to offer. I believed passionately in the National Party's values and what they could bring to New Zealand, and I wanted to be a part of it. Okay, so, so nine years down the track today, what do you make of the political environment with all this personal stuff going on for someone who probably just wants to discuss policy? You obviously are quite removed from everything that's going on today. Does that frustrate the hell out of you, just yeah. wanting to talk about the issues? Um, I look. I'm someone that's been personally attacked the whole, you know, the whole nine years, really, and then probably more in the last five or six as I've got better known. I've got pretty good at pushing that to the side, uh, and I can most of the time ignore it. I hate it, you know, and I worry about other people coming into Parliament that if they look at it, like no one's perfect. Mm. You know, you want to dig into some of my teenage years, I made some pretty big mistakes. Mm. You know, sort of say you don't end up, you know, pregnant, uneducated and, you know, on a benefit without having made a few Mm. poor choices at that time. So dig in enough, you'll find some stuff back then. Um, I don't want, that makes me a better and a stronger Mm, person. It makes me who I am. There's going to come a time where people are going to go, boy, if they've ever made a mistake in their life. They won't go into politics because they, they'll be judged so harshly on it. It's kind of sickening. Yeah, so you've got to have a pretty thick skin. You do, but you don't... I mean, actually, there's a place in Parliament for the ones that don't, and I just don't think they're going to go in. Yeah. It's just going to become a whole bunch of us old toughies. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so just got a few quick fire questions to finish. Um, in summary, what does it take to be a politician? You need that thick skin, you need to be tough, you need to have a vision, you need to be able to articulate it, you need to be able to bring people with you, you need to have a sense of humour, you need to be smart, you need to be able to read a lot, take it in, spit it all out, know what's important, judge everything on a minute by minute basis and quite like people. Brilliant. Okay, so if you could sum up your top sort of three bits of political (laughs) advice from what you've learned, what would you say for people who are wanting to get into politics? Uh, You better want it with every bit of everything you've got because it's going to consume your life. 
and you will have to make sacrifices and if you don't love it enough those sacri- you know those sacrifices won't make it worth it so you've got to want it that badly um, be smart think about what you bring that's different than the next person and if you don't know it go and get some life experience and study it and bring that in mm. to parliament so that you're adding value to the team mm. you're part of yeah, and what would be one of the key things today that if you could go back to the start of your political career, you'd give yourself that bit of advice? Think now you keep it at the forefront, but um, you didn't know it back then. Take every opportunity, okay. whether that's small or big, to yeah. speak in front of people, to be part of a group, to actually be in that sort of persuasive environment. Yeah. Um, study more. I do think that actually getting a strong education in a, uh, under your belt yeah. and then getting real work experience alongside of it gives you value in Parliament. Okay, and what would one of the biggest misconceptions be from the general public that frustrates all politicians no matter what party they're in? What's something that we that people just don't understand until they're there? I spend very, very little time thinking about other politicians. Yeah. And I think they think we all just sit there and argue with each other and amongst ourselves. Uh, I am 95% focused on New Zealanders and not on other politicians. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, uh, I guess to, I could word this better, but from being on the benefit to giving the benefit, what would the 16 year old girl you were think of the woman you've become today? Wouldn't recognise her. Okay. She'd Just be wouldn't pre- recognise her. Would she be proud? Yeah, yeah, for, of course. Yeah. You know, absolutely proud and, uh, and, and everything else. But I was a very unconfident, scared, um, unsure young teenager that just kind of couldn't find my, my place in life. And I don't think she would quite recognise this confident, you know, sort of yeah. bolshy woman that I've turned into. Yeah, which just goes to show that anyone can turn themselves around if they really want to. Yeah, if they really want to and they've got that right support and backing. Yeah. Um, I do think for women in particular a lot of it comes down to that belief in yourself and okay. that courage to take those steps. Yeah. And I'm sure there are attributes that men feel as well, but you know, like it really is that sort of fear of. Yeah. Um, and when you've got a child, that fear of the unknown uh, kind of adds to it. Yeah. So it's the risk taking. Yeah. And sometimes if you feel you've got no choices in life, then you're not prepared to take risks. If you don't take risks, then you can't do. Um, I think I'm a very ordinary person in a fairly extraordinary job. Okay. Right, Paul, let's finish. Uh, I think New Zealand's very proud of your journey and who you've become today. So can you look down this camera here and tell us, what are your wise words for the people of New Zealand? I do think that New Zealand is the country that can offer you anything. Um, It is a country that it doesn't matter what school you went to, what colour your skin is, what kind of family you grew up in, that if you believe in yourself enough and you work damn hard, you can achieve great things. So I reckon we're extraordinarily lucky, but it also takes a huge dose of self-belief to get ahead. So grab it, do it, because everyone's backing you and wants you to succeed. Well, then, thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers.